upon the imperative nature of genuine dialogue. Unfortunately, the government's solution has been cosmetic reforms and repression. Teachers, lawyers who raised legitimate concerns were either arrested or forced into exile. Doctors, important people in our society who asked for genuine dialogue were met with punitive transfers and humiliation. It is regrettable that the government hasn't learned from the past. We are ambassadors. We don't need anything again. The only thing that the only solution to the matter is let the government solve this problem by giving our independent freedom. We have a territory of our own. We recognize international boundaries. We have a language. We have a culture. We have our own laws. We have everything that is required by international standards to be a people and a nation and a state. The UN must give us this right. We as a people, we have the right to self-determination and we are determined to go our separate ways. The people of the Southern Cameroons have suffered under the uh, brutal regime of the annexationists, La République du Cameroon. We have suffered for 56 years and we finally decided that enough is enough. I think dialogue is the main, the main solution because military of military has never been a solution to the problem concerning these kind of issues. So the French, the government of Cameroon has to dialogue with the Anglophone region to come to a compromise and let this problem be solved. Now, we want to inform the whole world that the Southern Cameroonian prisoners of conscience in the jails of Yaoundé are on the second day of their declared hunger strike. Now, we want the entire world to know because we are convinced that the regime in Yaoundé will be indifferent until they begin to die. While we encourage our brothers in this process, we also call on Southern Cameroonians to join them in a fasting so that the whole world may know that we are a determined people. Self-determination cannot be effective without self-defense. We are opposed to violence. We are opposed to war. But if the Republic, if the UN should continue to dilly dally as they are doing, and the Republic comes now to attack our people, they are forced, they are bound, by the law of nature to defend themselves. Punchline Africa TV opposes any form of terrorism. And our policy is very clear. We, we, we condemn Al-Shabaab, we condemn Boko Haram, we condemn Al-Qaeda, we condemn any remnants of, of, of Al-Qaeda cells that linger on this African continent, that maim people, innocent people. All these acts are not done by a particular religion. People have just picked religion and used it. In Kenya, in East Africa, and in Africa, we should be vigilant. That is now we don't know. You can be very, you know, well equipped at your doorstep or at your gate, but you don't know. Up in the crowd when we are moving in town, in cities, in Dar es Salaam, in Mwanza, in, the, in the Kampala, in Chigali, in Johannesburg, these people have come closer to our cities in Nairobi. They would, you might be moving and somebody just starts stabbing you. I think they have changed the tactics. So we must be vigilant ourselves as citizens of these countries in Africa. Together we shall one day wipe out all forms of terrorism that have actually widened the gaps or the gulf between the, the people, the religions, and the type of hatred that is coming out is not very, very good.
must be our goal and our guide. And all that we strive for as a human family, dignity and hope, progress and prosperity, depends on peace. But peace depends on us. Welcome to Multiple Solutions Limited, a fully licensed air operator in Kenya that handles clearing and forwarding of cargo in and out of the East African corridor. With our latest cargo plane, Boeing B737-200 series aircraft, we will give you a world-class personalized and timely experience in delivery of goods across the African continent and the Middle East region. Multiple Solutions Limited, your logistics partner of first choice. Kenya, thank you very much, Africa, wherever you are in Accra, in Lagos, in Abuja, in Conakry, in Tunis, in Cairo, in Johannesburg, in Karare, Rwanda, Kinshasa, Asimara, Chigali, Kampala, Uganda, Dar es Salaam, Maputo, welcome to Africa, Cameroon, Yoonde, and Doura, wherever you are in those places, welcome to Punchline Africa TV watching on our satellite with our sister satellites in almost 120 countries now we shall be here for next one uh one hour talking about cameroon of late since the last two years the people of cameroon have suffered heavily from the forces of President Beer. A conflict that would have been resolved without any bloodshed has turned into bloodbath. Bloodbath in Cameroon continues to flow. The blood flows without any international intervention. The people of Amazonia have become targets of Cameroonian army that goes to Cameroon to kill, slaughter, maim, and destroy their property without the international community coming to their rescue. It is sad, therefore, we as a television station from Pan-African Systems decided we shall highlight most of these barbaric acts by President Bia's regime against the people of Amazonia. The people of Abazonia continue to cry for a simple thing, to let them go if there is no way of sitting down on a table. Resolution 1608 of 1961 gave the mandate, brought out differences. It showed that the people of Abazonia wanted to be on them. President Beer for 42 years has maimed, killed, raped, siphoned resources of the people of Cameroon, taken the resources to France, which was its former, his bosses, rely on the resources to destroy Af the rest of other parts of Africa. The conflict in Cameroon, therefore, needs international intervention. We have asked the AU to intervene. We have asked the UN. We have spoken. 
We have asked the EU. We have asked the Commonwealth. Many of these places, organizations have been asked. What can the people of Cameroon, Abazonia, do for now? This conflict seems to be generating into a civil war, a very serious civil war where genocide is being performed on the people of Abazonia. Villages are being wiped out. Women are being raped. Younger generations are being slaughtered, their throats and their stomachs cut wide open. The soldiers are killing rampantly without any sign of stopping this merciless massacre of innocent civilians who are simply demanding for their rights to exist in a state or to exist on their own. The international community, the ICC, has watched on helplessly as the people of Abazonia perish. The UN has come in to do little and say too much, as it is the question of what happened in Rwanda. Today, we are honored to have online from Washington, from Washington, the acting president of the people of Amazonia, Mr. Samuel Sako, His Excellency, Dr. Samuel Sako, who will be speaking to us directly to answer, to give us an update, up-to-date situation of what is taking place, what has taken place, what is happening right now in Amazonia. But before I call him and bring him online, I would like to ask my Amazonian people that a struggle does not start with a timetable. Neither does it end with a timetable. But the struggle ends with a roadmap. You better have a roadmap because it could come to a hold today that beer can say, okay, go. If you don't have a roadmap, then you would have wasted all this time fighting for what you cannot achieve at the end. Therefore, I want to thank my viewers. If you have your contribution, make it very clear to today's screen. We shall take some questions. We shall give some questions to the president. And then we shall later on engage ourselves with other people who are online. Otherwise, stay tuned. I want to bring in crossover to Washington, to United States of America, where we have our, the acting president of the people of Abazonia, Dr. Samuel Sako, or Advocate Sako, who himself has been in the struggle for the liberation of the people of Amazonia, Amazonia. And he has worked, he has talked to us before. Welcome to the studio of Punchline Africa TV, Dr. Samuel Sako. Good morning in America. Good morning. Thank you very much for the spotlight on this terrible genocide that is going on right now. It is an eyesore. It's a terrible thing that's happening right now. And the medias, the super medias of the world, uh, uh, su su super media of the world, they have turned away from, from, the, from the action. They have, they have pretended not to see because it doesn't serve the interests of their uh, master. This is happening now. What is happening now is greater than what happened in Libya before the French and the West intervened. What is happening now is greater than what happened in Kuwait when Saddam uh, invaded Kuwait. 
and not, not so many lives were lost, yet the whole world intervened in Operation Desert Storm. What is happening now is a carnage, is the reckless destruction of human lives. The people of Southern Cameroon, Sambazonia, they are killing us like rats. They are killing us like animals. They burn down our villages. And when we run to the forests, more than 60,000 people are run, they have run to the forest after the destruction of more than 28 villages. In this program, I will be projecting a picture, a picture of, of one of the villages, one of the 28 villages that have been destroyed. You will see it for yourself. And when these people run to the, to the, to the forests, some of them pregnant, some of them with babies, some of them put into bed in the forest. Then they send their elite army to pursue them in the forest and shoot them there like, like, like wild animals. And then when they cannot find all of them at the time, they pre prefer to bring their, bomb, their, 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 their bombers. And we have intercepted uh, an, an intelligence on from them. That indicates that in the next 48 hours or so, they will receive an order from their uh, from their leader to carry on uh, bombing of those who are running and desperately running for their lives in the forest. They have killed us. They have mass graves. This is this. The war cannot be silent. Thank you very much, Dr. Masanga, for being that lone one outside uh, the Amazonia who has decided to shine the spotlight on this evil, this darkness that is in our continent. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, uh, Dr. Samuel Osako, we have seen very graphic pictures that we don't want to display at times because of the time and the children are on TV. <laughs> but this graphic situation, we have tried to send messages to the African Union. Is it possible that any of your delegation have now taken this matter up with Washington, D.C., just as we, those in London have tried to take the matter that threatened Mr. Beer not to appear in Commonwealth? Have you, how far have you gone with that lobby. Yes, we have, and we are still doing so. We have been to the State Department, to the to the uh, uh, to the to the gov the seat of government. We have had meetings. We have presented these facts. We have um, met with many. Uh, and, and, but let me say this: that in this matter. It, it is like it's not a, a game of conscience because I thought that it's a matter of right and wrong, that there are still good people in this world, especially in a nation like America, that touts the values of freedom, of, 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 of human life, of equality before the law. And then, and then to turn away, this is a matter of turning away their eyes from what they know because it's a game of interests. I call upon, I call upon the, the leaders of the world beyond the United States of America that I think there are still some good people who will act because their conscience says it is right to do that and make sure that they pressure the ruling, the ruling class to do the right thing. Probably, I don't know, we have been talking to the people that matter, the people that can make our voices heard in those circles, but unfortunately, we are still where we are. And let me tell you, every minute of the day, the carnage continues. Blood is, the, the, uh, the blood is oozing. The people are bleeding. Mass graves are being filled every day. They are shooting. There is no law in, in that part of the world. It is a war that is going on. A war of the cameras of the war, of the reporting of the war. United, uh, uh, OAU, is not is not is not there to 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 even ex, uh, examine what we are saying. Amnesty International is a distant away. They have not so much as made it a priority to come and report. Because sometimes when we say say anything, they say we are exaggerating. 
they are supposed to be the ones that should tell the story for the world to believe and for these people to believe. They are not there. United Nations Commission for Human Rights must set up a delegation to go there and see for themselves. This cannot be happening in the 21st century. And then, and then the good people of the world, wherever you are and you can hear me, you can make a pitch. Maybe they will hear you. Maybe they will see the, uh, the, the need to do something, to, to just do the right thing, to stop this, to stop this. We have made a demand, a political demand. We have made a legal demand. We have the right of, of self-determination. We were an independent nation. We were uh, separate from uh, the French Cameroon. We came together as equal parties, formally two category A uh, um, uh, trust territories. We came together through political action. We cannot all be slaughtered because we want, we are reclaiming, restoring the independence that we got. And this United States of America, they were among the 64 countries that voted for our independence in 1961, April 21st. They cannot turn away their eyes. I wish that there is somebody listening to me who will tell somebody who is in power, who has, who has a conscience, and who wants to do the right thing, to just listen to us and help us. Like on that same note, ask you a question and the questions. For example, should we now stop sanitizing beer? Should we stop sanitizing beer, beer's actions, and call what is going on in Abazonia as ethnic cleansing? Exactly. There is, if there was a, a better word, I would say let's go for that. But that is exactly what is going on now. They assist. What, what qualifies anybody to die is that you express yourself in English and you find yourself in the territory of the British sorting Cameroons Amazonia. If you are found there anywhere in those villages where they can do it off cameras, where there are, there are no, there's no internet, where there are no cameras, of course, and then where the people are frightened to death, as, as if they find you there, you die. You are shot, you are killed summarily, execution style, and there's no judgment, there are no uh, uh, commissions of inquiry, there is no investigation, there are no punishment for those. They have been ordered to kill. And that's what they, they are, they are, oh, we have intercepted intelligence that suggests that they have been sent there to kill every human being of Amazonian descent who is from the ages of 13, every young man, because they want to wipe us out completely, that we will never arise and succeed to resist or tell the truth or fight back. So they are killing us, a lot of people. Let them just, let the world just go there to see for themselves, go to the hospitals. Lately, they are going to the hospitals now, as we speak, they are, they are everyone who is wounded and is a young man, they snatch them, they kidnap them from the hospital, then summarily kill them, uh, take them away and go and kill them. But at least, at least there are some hospitals they have not done so. Go there, go to the community, let the world come and see. This is an, a, a, a genocide alert. It is going on right now as we speak. When it happened in Rwanda, the world came up and said never again. But it is happening now. It is happening now. This is ethnic cleansing going on in 2018. Cleansing indeed. There is no more sanitizing beer. We shall label it in the future programs. Let me ask you another question. Because viewers all over the whole world, some of them have sent me these questions to ask. As the president or acting president of this organization, of the Amazonian people, is there room? Because there is this wind of handshake blowing <laughs> around the world that everybody tended to be handshaking. Even you see North Korea handshaking South Korea and uh, many other things happening. And uh, in Kenya handshake, 
In the South Sudan, they are calling for handshake. Is there any room for any negotiation on the negotiating table? And if so, what are your conditions before the engagement with the dictator called Mr. Bia? Um, for you, before you answer, to be precise, I want to tell you that question came from AU. <laughs> Somebody from AU Secretariat, African Union is asking because they know I am uh, one of the stations that is in touch with the leadership of, of Abazonian people. If there are any, if so, what are your conditions? We found ourselves in an illegal union. That means a coexistence without any legal foundation. A, 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 a union that flouted all United Nations resolutions because they refused to fulfill, to do what the United Nations Charter and the trustee agreement between uh, the United Nations and the trust uh, masters or administrators said. So it was built on illegality. Now, when we started this strike action, uh, we, we started just by just asking for uh, aspects of the, the, of the things we are suffering from, all the discrimination, all the uh, uh, in education in, uh, in, in the legal system. So aspects of those were presented as the demands. And then they continued in their in their policy, which is just identify them, pretend as if you want to negotiate with them, identify them, kill them, or imprison them. That's all. And do those that are useful, corrupt them and use them for your for in your government and silence the rest of the population. That's what they have done for 56 years. So they did that. And right now, our leaders are still in jail. The leaders are still in jail. The face of our struggle is still in jail. And today, as I speak, he will be appearing before the court to be sentenced, probably for life. Because they made that demand, that's it. Now, we, are, they, we had a choice to fix something that was bad, which was not done well. It was not even done. We had a choice if there was any need for dialogue. The dialogue was meant to say, this, this foundation is wrong. There was no relationship between us. Can we now agree to go back to put that foundation in place so that there will be a treaty of union that binds the two former trust territories, two former independent countries to make them one so that their boundaries can be, can be, can be reconstructed to reflect a new nation as the United Nations intended. Now, they have systematically killed us from 2016. I want to tell you that thousands have been killed and have been killed. Thousands have been made. Have been made. 3,000 are in maximum security concentration camps, not even in our territory, but in Bia's territory. Now, I hear this talk about dialogue. About 28 of our villages have been, have been burnt down. Let me show you a picture first. I don't know if how much of this you can see. This is just one of the 28 villages. Seeing that picture, and that picture came, we have also displayed it on our website on the, on the, of the station. Those are the pictures on how the Cameroonian army is bombing Ambazonia, wiping out all, all the inhabitants. That type of genocide. Ethnic cleansing is what happened in Yugoslavia. I don't know why the world is waiting without even reprimanding Mr. Paul Beer from bombing his own people. I don't know. But that is our role is to make sure that we make more and more laudable information to the UN and other agencies. Those are the pictures that are coming out from Abazonia at the moment. Okay, let me finish the question. I wanted to show you the carnage because when we talk, it's abstract. People think we're just talking. This is what happened, what is happening on a daily basis. This is one of the 28 largest vi villages we have 
that have been burnt down completely. And do you know what? Those inhabitants, those babies, those, those nursing mothers, those who survived the carnage, the killing, the shooting, they have run into the forest. They have run into the forest. And now there are thousands that are closer to Nigeria, now about 70,000 who have been able to cross into Nigeria and they are living there in squalor. These are people who are just surviving in their villages, just living uh, subsistence, through subsistence farming. They eat from hand to mouth. And then you have, brought, you have, you have sent, sent them down 50 years back, destroyed their houses, burned down everything, and they even went to go to the crop farms and they destroyed their farms. This is like a movie, right? It is happening right now. And then you are coming to ask me that can we go back to 1961 and fix the foundation of our union? Come on. What are we fixing? The union, the treaty was never made between the two of us. If there was good faith, then we can say, okay, let us fix it. We are being destroyed. As we speak today, as we speak today, as we speak now, they are killing us now. They are burning down villages, and there is a threat that they are going to bomb those who have run into the forest. They will meet them in the forest with bombs. It is happening right now. The, the, the alert says that the planes are in Yaoundé and they are in the, in the north. Let the international community go and verify if it is not true. Then how do you talk of negotiation? Negotiation means we are coming together to fix something. We are not going to fix something that will lead us to the grave every day for the rest of our lives. We have suffered enough to deny that we will no more continue in this. To deny that we were not going to continue to establish a, a something from an experiment that has failed. We have had an experiment for 58 years. How many years do you have to go through a wrong experiment for you to say enough is enough? You cannot be doing the same thing in, the, in this over and over and you say you are because you are just doing an experiment. No, the experiment for 57 years has failed. Therefore, we cannot talk of negotiation. It has woefully failed. We have suffered. We have we have been decimated. Now we are saying we are saying we have restored our independence. Therefore, the only thing we want to do with La Republic du Cameroon, the British thought in Cameroon's Republic of Ambazonia wants to do with it, is negotiation. We want to negotiate the terms of our separation out of a union that has woefully failed, out of a, an experiment that has woefully been a bad experience to every one of us. Mr. President, I can see that we have gone back and we, we have stood by you on resolution 1608. And therefore, the gentleman who asked this question from AU, you have heard from the president directly. They cannot negotiate when there is no ceasefire. When the, this, they cannot talk of what is not supposed to be talked about when Mr. Bia is killing their people. Mr. Bia must now be told, reprimanded from his army going up to kill with the people of Amazonia. Then maybe later on in the future, people can talk of anything of this nature. Let's move on to the question of international community. France is one of the countries that has actually supported, equipped, supplied, and uh, to some extent, logistically helped the Cameroonian army to dismember Bazonians. Is Do you have any words for France? it is happening right now. Their, their, their armies are on the ground, their experts, their accounts, their advisors, military advisors, and, and their experts are already in Ambazonia now. They have been spotted in Ambazonia, helping practically, directly helping the, the, the Cameroon uh, military terrorists to destroy and decimate us. Remember, this program, this program of decimating uh, Ambazonia, 
is masterminded by the French because silence is complicity. If they, have said, they say nothing, they have a leverage over this, uh, 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 this puppet master Paul Beer. They have said nothing. They have, they have, they have pretended the pro problem does not exist. They write his policies. They, they, they dictate his actions. It be because of the of the pact they signed with uh, the Cameroon, uh, 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 La, La Republic or French Cameroon in 1958-59, which they call uh, a, a cooperation agreement, a call de coopération. That agreement makes French practically the people that rule over French Cameroon. So if they cannot say anything, they are guilty by their silence. They are guilty even by their actions. They are, they are, they are helping French, uh, the French Cameroon to, 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 to carry on this genocide. They are guilty by complicity. They are guilty by silence. Because, because if they, they have the power to tell their stock, enough is enough. We cannot continue to help you. We, we, we did not, we, we failed in Rwanda. We cannot be seen to fail in the 21st century in, 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 in your country. Stop it. If they do that, in the next 24 hours, there will be no more killing. So, listen, what we need now to go forward is a unilateral ceasefire from Paul Beer. We are defending ourselves. We want to leave. We don't want to be all killed in one morning. And so if he doesn't stop, then what, what, how, we cannot call, we cannot stop. No man can stop defending himself because he wants peace. It is the one that is attacking, the aggressor, who is killing people. We have, they have all their army and the best of their equipment are um, uh, given to them by, 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 by their allies to kill us. They are all in our territory. Now, how do we want peace? How do people say that they'll return to peace? Let's talk. How can we have anything like negotiation when they are actively there in a war, in a war, killing us? A defenseless people, and our people are struggling to defend themselves. They declare in last last ceasefire, and then they must release our thousands of innocent Ambazone, more than 3,000 in their concentration camps, and then they must also make sure that they demilitarize our area so with somebody that can even negotiate for his separation. That is what the world must do. Or let them come and see you. Much. Mr. President, the people of Abazonia, the people of Cameroon, I just want to give the president one minute or two minutes to address on any other issues that you have not raised, especially on the issue of unity among us the people themselves who are fighting this oppression. A number of times in Nairobi and other places we have been confronted with some few malcontents <laughs> who pretend to be freedom fighters and yet they are traitors of your cause. How do you unite all these factions, the so-called factions, those who have tested the beer food and those who want to be Babazonia, but they want to test the beer food, they want a moderate, it's a, a, you know, a middle line. The ones we call traitors in South Africa, we call them Afikzolo. In East Africa, we call them some name. Your place, you call them your name. Now, would you please address the question of unity among the people of Abazonia who are fighting a dictatorship that is destroying your can, your people, killing your people, maiming your people, and stopping all social amenities in your territory as we speak now. Word of unity, Mr. President. Yes, thank you, Dr. Masanga. I want to say two things before I depart. This is a warning to all the traitors whether they be of Amazonia descent or they be of the uh, French Cameroon. You know, the interim government has 
the people of Ambazonia entirely behind it on ground zero. Anybody who doubts it should go on ground zero, go to what we call ground zero, Ambazonia, go to Boya, go to anywhere, go to Barinda, go to uh, Batibo, go to Manfe, go to Kumba, and just take any random survey, you will know that we are in charge, 100%. Forget about <laughs> The, 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 the little things you read on social media. We are in a generation where our, this, this, uh, this struggle is being prosecuted basically um, mainly on social media because everyone with a keyboard and a phone or a computer is a broadcaster. So people talk like they talk. But we are one of the most united revolutionary movements in the world right now. Because when it was, when South Africa had their revolution, there were even bloody clashes between uh, uh, factions. That is not happening in Amazonia because everyone on ground zero is for the interim government. And we, they, are, they, are, they are completely united for one purpose, to free our land. And we speak for them. And so I want to warn all the traitors, those who can afford to serve the evil one against the interests of their own people, that the interim government does not have uh, FBI or CIA to, to look for you. But the people that you are hurting, the people whose cousins and brothers and sisters and mothers have been killed and are being killed, you cannot, uh, you cannot estimate or underestimate what they can do to you, even as lone wolves, be, by virtue of their frustration. You cannot put yourself in harm's way to pretend to be, to, to, to be helping the people and you are a spy trying to undermine the resolve and the struggle of the people. For many, for millions of us, this struggle is a matter of life and death. If you do that, there will anybody, even from just the frustration of his father or his son who disappeared, will come against you, knowing that you are the one who is going to tell this terrorist regime of your own day, how to get them, how to kill them, how to abduct them, how to eliminate them. That's a warning. And then there are also those who are, who are bringing division on the social media. History will hold you responsible. No, it doesn't matter how much, how many times you use pseudo names. One day somebody will know your face. And you know what? This, the end of this struggle shall be in Boya, our capital. We will surely get there. And many of us shall be reminded, you know, in this digital age, there are footprints everywhere. You cannot escape. They will remember. They will show you photographs and show you videos and say, you did this. You wrote this and you contributed this to destroy the struggle. Some people who are seeing this struggle now will not enjoy the victory lap. I can assure you that because of their position of trying to destroy what the people are doing. And then I, we speak to the Francophones and the French Cameroonians who are living in our territory. Some of them are agents of these terrorists from Yaoundé planted there to come and spy on our people and look for the best of our best in our community for elimination. You have been, you know, we have noticed that, and the people are angry. The people of Amazonia are angry. They are looking around to see who is the traitor, who are their traitors, who are those who are working in collaboration with those who have been sent to decimate them. So this. Uh, these people are angry. And for that reason, we issued an order yesterday that if you are speak of a French expression and you are in Amazonia, we fear for your lives because of what Paul Beer has decided to do. We have no problem with the Francophones. This was a matter of the system that has kept us in slavery for 56 years. But Paul Beer has decided to change it using the French soldiers using the French population, planting them in all our territories to use them to, uh, 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 to as spies in order to uh, identify individuals who are strong, who, are, who, who express themselves publicly, who are bold, who will resist them if they do, if they try to identify them for elimination. And the population is enraged. Now, we don't want the innocent Francophones to be affected. We don't want them to be affected or to be, in, on, uh, to be, uh, to be found uh, um, uh, uh, in jeopardy. So we are giving them 30 days to relocate by the end of this month, relocate to safe places. 
so that you will not be mistaken for the uh, French soldiers and uh, security agents that have been planted here and there to spy on us and decimate the people of Amazonia. When the lone wolves are the people who are mad and angry, when they want to come against you, they should not make, they, they, you should, they, they, we don't want the innocent people to be affected because we don't have any power to stop this anymore. You cannot stop a, a, an angry man who has lost father, his brother, his sister, his mother has been raped. We cannot determine what one million, two million people will do. Let those of French expression who have been noted for this, let them relocate to uh, La Republique du Cameroon. We are we, up to the end of this month so that they will not be misconstrued for spies and dangerous agents of La Republique who are planted to kill them. And then secondly, I want to appeal to the, uh, a donation for donations also of uh, what we call my trip to Boya. My trip to Boya. My trip is my um, MW, MY, trip is T R I P, 2 T O, Boya is spelled B U E A dot com. We are, we are helping ourselves. We are trying to help those who we, we don't even know where to begin. But we have 70,000 refugees. 70,000 refugees counting. It is almost rainy season now. They are living on, on, on the, without shelter, without, without the basic necessities. We need help. We need help for the thousands who are in jails, who are dying because of hunger. We need help for those who need even, even hospital. They cannot pay their hospital bills. And they are in their thousands with terrible wounds, trying to, trying to hold, they're trying to survive. They need help from us. So if you can help us, wherever you are, you are an Africanist. You are a good person, one of the good people in this world. And you want to make your own donation. Please go to mytriptoboya.com and give us a penny. Give us some help. And and uh, you would have done the right thing for your continent. Thank you. President, I want to let you go to sleep or to finish your sleep in, in the United States of America. But thank you for talking to us, talking to the audience worldwide in over 141 countries so far that have been registered here. The, the, the response was huge. Those watching all over the whole world, those from Amazonia and those in Africa, African Union, we tagged you to watch that this is a situation that is deteriorating in Cameroon. Our television is here to resolve, to bring peace on the continent. A few minutes ago, one hour ago, we were talking about South Sudan. I think you watched some of us almost coming to tears because of South Sudan. We are here to help any African country that has a problem and whose problem can be singled out. Anybody who is oppressed like the people of Amazonia who have come out to say we have a problem. And this problem is Mr. Beer, 42 years of leadership, bad leadership, paying taxes to France and France sending back the little coins is what we have. But my last words are this. Many of African, this is my take, many of African countries fall victims of their own self-inflicted wounds. If you look at the question of Amazonia, with resolution 1608, what the government of Amazonia would have, uh, of Cameroon would have done was to admit and accept resolution 1608 there would be no chaos, there would be no war, there would be no killing each other. We do solve problems halfway. We do call upon our other people to come in to injure us. Yet these problems could be solved, could have been solved way, way back. The situation in Amazonia is going out of hand. Those who are watching, you have heard for yourself the president of the people of Amazonia saying it. The situation becomes murky, and therefore, it is up to the AU, EU, UN, Commonwealth to urgently move in to save the dying refugees who are crossing over to Nigeria, 
where they are also met with very harsh conditions in Nigeria because Buhari also faces the same challenge across. And therefore, if you think that if he took part in assisting Amazonians, he would also be bringing a problem of the Biafran conflict. So we, these refugees in Obazoni are caught up between a hard place, between a rock and a hard place. The situation is very bad, and I would like the African Union to come in. It is you people to come in to support these people of Abazonia to be able to have self-determination. A peaceful resolution of the conflict is found. I just want to thank all my viewers and the viewers of the whole international community who are watching the show. Mr. President, thank you very much for enlightening us and enlightening the people of the world about the atrocities that are being committed by the Bia regime in Cameroon and in particular the Amazonian people. The struggle for the total emancipation of the people of Amazonia continues. Let there be peace. Let that peace come when you have. Remember to unite because most countries in Africa fight for independence then they end up split and turning guns against themselves, each other. I want to take this opportunity to tell you, the viewers, that thank you very much. Next, our program is Zimbabwe. But if, Mr. President, you seem to have a word. I just want Go to ahead. make a pitch on the Red Cross, because <clears throat> here 20, 10 people are killed somewhere, and the Red Cross is all over the place trying to help. But what, why is the Red Cross not in certain Cameroons? Why are this, all these institutions that were set up to make life better for human beings in crisis? Why, is, why are these institutions failing? Why are they not in... I would challenge the Red Cross to go to southern Cameroons, uh, Ambazonia, and tell me that I am wrong. That is not true. Why are they staying away? There are people with people have been decapitated, people are dying, people are being killed, terrible wounds, hospitals are not there, they have been raised down. People have run, even doctors and, and I mean nurses have run into the forests. Um, I they are all IDPs now living in the forest. Let the Red Cross be be no go to that place and tell me that it is not happening. Why are they not in British Southern Cameroon, even for an evaluation. So I challenge them to come now, and this is the moment now. This is the moment now where the people are being killed on a daily basis. And we, before we go get wiped out and they come and write histories and they write documentaries, let them come now and see what is going on and help those victims in the bushes. Okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you very much, viewers. Thank you, all of you. We now turn to our next program is Zimbabwe. And on Zimbabwe, we shall be looking at the, to counter the, the, the fallacy that is being peddled by the leader of MDC, who is on a fact-finding or, or check-finding mission in Britain. You see, Africa has got its own problems. The MDC called for sanctions on Zimbabwe to kill Zimbabweans. And today they are not shameful to talk about them having liberated or having gone out of this. So, Mr. President, thank you very much. Next is Zimbabwe, the MDC that called for sanctions against its own people. Thank you very much. Keep watching. We shall be with you in the next two to three minutes. And the people of Zimbabwe, wake up. It is your liberation that you want to throw in the hands of neocolonialism. Thank you very much. Take care. Keep watching Next Zimbabwe.
Welcome to Multiple Solutions Limited, a fully licensed air operator in Kenya that handles clearing and forwarding of cargo in and out of the East African corridor. With our latest cargo plane, Boeing B737-200 series aircraft, we will give you a world-class personalized and timely experience in delivery of goods across the African continent and the Middle East region. Multiple Solutions Limited, your logistics partner of first choice. Disaster. 